And the whole purpose of having a daily practice around your physical and mental health is to really battle entropy so that we don't degrade faster and we can stay here a little bit longer, right? Welcome back to the Think Fitness Life podcast, folks. Today we're going to talk about like 10 to 30 minute routines that you can always do, kind of keep in your back pocket, good for when you lack time in the week, good for when you're just trying to supercharge your workout because you got more fires to put out for the day. And really these are just things to include in your weekly routine. I wouldn't say that it should become your weekly routine because then you can absolutely overdo it with some of the with, the with some of the physical side of things that we have for solutions here but with the uh, with the mental side of things those are definitely things that you can do every day but the physical side of things that intensity is pretty high because again you're trying to get it all done within 10 to 30 minutes so it should be expected but yeah let's go ahead and dive right into some good solutions for when people are stressed or stuck on time or have a full plate that week so when it comes to daily routine, especially for me, it can be a, a busy route day. And Matt, as trainers, we are up early in the morning and most of the time, sometimes we get home later at night. So finding time was always very challenging so at times to be able to do what you want to do. If not, you were programming, you were working mm-hmm. with clients, you were getting to work. I mean, that was the whole process of taking the tea to getting to work and At times, that's when I started to find that I could use that time to do certain things that I want. I'm a big reader. I love reading. That time, for me, it was 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening. I had an hour of time where I could read. Now, during the day when things are crazy and clients are having issues and this and that, and you're you're back and forth. So... Yeah, with, with getting to work, it was – especially taking the train, that was my time. And yeah, there's a lot of other people on the train and sometimes I'd run into coworkers on the train and we would converse and talk about the, the day ahead and yesterday and, and business and all that stuff. But it was really – that time was to reflect back on you know, how my day was going to go. And Matt, I know you took the train too when we worked in Boston. It was kind of the same. You just have this lull of time. And I would look around and watch people aimlessly be on their phones and whether they wanted to sleep, whichever they want to do. And it kind of made me realize that that time was very important and how to get work in that time for me, work on myself or work on whatever I like to do was very important. And then as the day goes, you kind of have to ramp up and get ready for the day. And it's interesting because you kind of get different perspectives when you listen to clients about their morning routines. They wake up, they turn the coffee on, they go to work. Some people wake up, they have coffee, they sit there for an hour, they watch the news, they do different things. Everyone has different behaviors and different habits in the morning. And I think that it's important to have throughout the day and keep throughout your week, especially when you're working, because that kind of gives some solitude to what you are as a person and what you like to do. Yeah. I think it's always valuable to hope for the best, but plan for the worst. The classic line of if you're, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And definitely in our line of work, it was very variable schedules and you had to be able to adapt and adjust. And I think for me, I I'm my, I used to be my own worst enemy. I still am my own worst enemy. What am I talking about? I, I do good like Monday through Thursday and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all bets are off. No, I'm teasing. But um, for me, having some good routines around my mental health and kind of calming the snow globe of my, that is my thoughts, right, in my head – that's always been crucial for me to kind of hold in my back pocket. And actually it wasn't until I was at Equinox and learned more about the the exercise science behind what I was doing in the gym, especially from Eric, did I start to get some more of these 10 to 30 minute routines workout wise that could still give me my best bang for my buck, stay on top of my program, make sure I'm still getting the best benefits of what, what I'm trying to do for my physical health. 
But then also the big thing with just staying consistent is we got to battle entropy. Everyone who's listening to this podcast is, is typically over mid twenties and, and puberty ends in that early twenties to mid 20 range for men and women. So after that, we're just on a slow decline people. No, I'm teasing, but we are oxidizing, right? I mean, we lose 60,000 particles of skin just, just talking and completing a sentence. That's why we have a vacuum cleaner. So we're just the way your car will rust and degrade with time. We do the same thing. And the whole purpose of having a daily practice around your physical and mental health is to really battle entropy so that we don't degrade faster and we can stay here a little bit longer, right? So for me, coming back to how this has been so helpful for me is, is just having those 10 to 20, 30 minute routines, whatever they were at, at the initial time that I did it, now it can be like a, a 30 second, five minute routine where I remind myself to do a little breathing pattern or a little mindfulness meditation and it, it, it just works. I mean, you, you practice something, you're growing that like a muscle. So yeah, just having tools in your toolbox because I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, with your mind, with your body, right? It's not like anything's bad. It's not bad that you sit for multiple hours a day. It's just if you don't do anything to complement that, then it becomes bad, right? Don't let the medicine become the poison. So figure out how you're going to complement your routine with the best practices to put your best foot forward and battle entropy. So I think the the next kind of piece we want to talk about is, is some of the routines that have, that we've used that work well for us. And I can talk about more of the mental ones. Eric can talk more about the physical ones. We'll save the, the good stuff for last. So when it, when it comes to thinking and slowing down your, your breathing and slowing down your thoughts and synchronizing your mind and body so you can operate from a place of effortless spontaneity or what's another phrase that I really like? unobstructed self-expression then the best piece that I remember doing when I was learning meditation was labeling your breath. You call your inhale calm and you exhale with ease. So now you like literally just don't give your brain an opportunity to think someone, say, think other things. This is like training wheels for your brain people. This is like you're trying to grab your thoughts and be like, no, you're thinking about this and you're thinking about this. And slowly but surely, your attention starts to become on your breath and you do start to embody calm and ease and you are naturally just lowering, slow, slowing your, slowing down your heart rate with your exhales and you're, you're bringing down your heart rate, blood pressure, and you get to, again, settle that snow globe that becomes our mind so shaken and stirred up of, of memories and to-do lists and, judgments and what's for dinner and just ping pong and all over the place or people like to call it monkey brain. So that's been a really beneficial one. So again, just labeling inhale of calm, exhale with ease, calm and ease. And just close your eyes and do that for five, 10 minutes. And you'll, you'll start to see kind of what I'm talking about. Or, or I hope you do. But then that, again, that becomes like a muscle that you build up over time that you maybe only do once a week. And then eventually when you're in those tight situations, you know, maybe you're on the road or you're at work or you're at home with your family. And instead of you lashing out, you take a, a second and take a pause, the sacred pause as mm -hmm. it is referred to. And a lot of, a lot um, of breathing is, is stem through that. Like the different types of breathing out there, it's all focused on pausing and slowing things down. And I think the most important thing of that breathing is slowing everything down, slowing yourself down. And that's a technique that works so well. Hard to do at well, times. Well, it's really, it's really calibrating mm -hmm. our brain and body. We get so caught up in the what's called the small mind, our thinking mind, that we forget there's this whole like world of experience and signals from our body that we're basically on mute to right now. But I think a big piece is that that's not always the best solution for people. Some people just can't sit there. They're, there's just too much going on. And I love Bruce Lee even said he doesn't sit when he meditates, he walks. Mm -hmm. And 
that's where I'm, I know I'm stealing, I'm jumping on your all good man your Go recommendation here. But <laughs> yeah, I, when we were talking about putting this episode together, Eric mentioned a walk, like a leave your phone at home walk for ten minutes, and I, I think that's beautiful because. It speaks home to me. I definitely do that, especially because I have a dog, so it's even easier to get outside more often. But when you bring your phone on a walk and you're checking it every time or you hear the notification and your heart rate probably simultaneously goes up a little bit, spikes a little bit, it's good to just kind of separate yourself from your from your to-do list, from your day-to-day. It's not going anywhere. It's not no, going to be completed minute. when you get back. Don't worry. <laughs> but, yeah, so then I think that's a good alternative for people who just can't sit through it and, and talk it out. But these are definitely methods. These meditations are basically like a form of cognitive behavior therapy, people. You are absolutely reprogramming your brain. They, they talk about, a doc, Dr. Norman Doidge talks about the brain is shaped by the thoughts, but the brain also guides the thoughts. And they're, they reference a river and a riverbed. The river, the water itself is shaping the riverbed, but the riverbed is also naturally kind of guiding the water. So you can... You can, I was going to say, you can think of another one here where you are, you say your name, you say, I am Joe Smith or I am Mac Luckman. And you're, you can be walking, you can be sitting, whatever works best for you. Kind of, this is like a hybrid solution here for people, quick, quick routine. And you say, I am Mac Luckman. And then you think of all the things you have to get done that day, all the things that are on your to-do list that you have to accomplish in it today, this week and in, in this life, right? And you just list them all. And then you, you take a piece off of your mantra. You were saying, I am my name first and last. Now you're saying, I am my name first. And then you keep going and you think of all the th- all the happy memories from your childhood, all your favorite memories, or not even favorite, sorry, good and bad memories from your childhood, not just your favorite. And then you drop your name again. Now you're saying, I am. And then you go into drop the I am. You say, Om. And eventually you get to a place of, of just calmness and you just drop the ohm and you just sit in awareness. And that's the whole point is to kind of beat your thoughts to the punch. You're like, fuck you. I'll go to my to-do list. Fuck you. I'll go to my memories. <laughs> I'm coming to go check out that book. I'm going to go check out mm-hmm. that book. And then I'm just going to sit here. And when I'm done reading, I'm going to enjoy some peace and fucking quiet. <laughs> and it, it works. So. You can Google Deepak Chopra three minute meditation for that one. If you want to hear that one again, people and hear it from the master himself. But I love that one. That's such a good go to. And I, I can just kind of pull that one out of my ass whenever I need to in a tight situation. So, And, and you do them more in the morning, correct? It well, can depend. It, so those are – Or no, I mean like you so – There's a time that I'll like sit down and mm-hmm. I'll like build on my meditation practice and I'll just kind of have 15 to 30 minutes. But then there are times when I just don't have time and I have to pull out one of those and kind of pull it up on YouTube, put it on my car if I have the time or just kind of walk myself through it because I've heard it so many times. Yeah. And yeah, that can be really beneficial to just, again, kind of calm that snow globe of your brain. And those are the opportunities, as I kind of mentioned earlier, that where you can you find this free time that you have in the day. Sometimes I would in the morning sit outside and have 10 minutes to meditate, loved it. Other times there wasn't. So the car ride, a, for me, sometimes a silent car ride with no music, nothing else, kind of just thinking about maybe what the day is or the previous day or decompressing thoughts. That's also another avenue. I know a lot of meditation is not like that, but I also in my mental health walks with that, If if I have a more of a stressful day or need to kind of think about processes or that happened or did happen. That's kind of when I like to use that as well. And it's just all about finding those minutes. It could be two to three minutes of just that breathing that makes a difference and and changes your, your heart rate and your mood, especially if you're also coming home to whether it's a family, kids, pets, or a household, it's a good way to just kind of, Five minutes before you're going to be at home, do these practices. And it really helped me be like, okay, I can now start to relax and like enter into the evening and shut my day off. But going over the more of the meditation, the mental side of things, flipping into the time that you have in your day that you freed up that you maybe want to 
get some physical activity in or help your your well-being of your physical fitness. Sometimes we need to do something physical and other times we're tight on time and we need to get our workout in for that day. So we have some 10 to 30 minute ass kicking routines. That's We have one that's going to develop strength and power. We have one that's more for conditioning. And then we have one for people out there looking for like a really good calorie burn. And again, these are really good tools that you can throw in your toolbox from time to time when you're tight on time, low on equipment, or just, again, trying to keep up with that consistency in your routine because of whatever happened to, on your schedule or whatever so that you need to get it all done in 20 minutes. But we don't want to skip. We don't want to just forego and just throw the baby out with the bathwater. If we lost 20, 30 minutes but we still have a 15 to 20-minute chunk, let's make good use of that time. So I'm going to pass the mic over to Eric and let him talk about those three 10 to 30-minute supercharged workout routines sometimes you see your 10 minutes and that's going to be a that's going to be a rough workout and, and by gosh one of these is so one of the, the first thing you have, i mean if, oof, i mean if anyone out there you're going to do this it's going to sound easy it's going to sound simple but when you get out there i'm going to tell you you're going to be like oh hell this sucks i, I guess the disclaimer too is Make sure you at least spend five minutes warming up. Yeah, spend please spend warm five up. to 15 minutes warming up before you do any of these and make sure you are mobily capable of doing these movements before you throw yourself into one of these. Yeah, that's our little yeah. like disclaimer. Make sure no one gets gets hurt. Make sure you know your fitness mm-hmm. level, know your body. Especially the, the first one is a is well been done. It's, it's called a Litvinov workout. You have to use a heavy load. So you're going to use your compound exercises, a squat, a clean, Olympic lift, a front squat, a back squat. You will also need a track here. So I tell a lot of people, be smart on kind of what you pick. If you don't have that much equipment or you just need to bring something, you can. You also can. You don't need a track. You can also do it on. You can do it in a gym. You can do it in a treadmill. Yeah. 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 So if there's like a squat rack and then just make sure there's a treadmill nearby. So what you're going to do is let's say you take a heavy deadlift. You do eight reps on the deadlift, heavy, and then you run a 400-meter sprint as fast as you can go. Recover and repeat it three times. That's it. It honestly sounds super fucking easy. It's like eight reps of something heavy and then go run 400 meters. But let me just say that probably 30, 20, 30 years ago, the science was thought that you couldn't even physically do something like that. And they just didn't think the muscle fibers would be able to hold up on something like that because this is a sprint. You're supposed to sprint for those 400 meters. And for those of you who don't know that distance, again, that's one lap <laughs> around a track. So it's eight heavy reps, 400 meters around a track. Rest how long? How long do you usually rest between those bouts? Two, three minutes. And then it was three times. Yeah, it, you're it was, just doing three sets of it. Yep, three but sets. It's brutal. It and there's people going like 405 for eight reps and then running 400 meters. And I'll tell anyone, and if people out there know that are 400 meter track runners, it is hell on earth. You get 200 yeah. in, and then it's just things you're are just all hitting fire. the wall. So, yeah, I you'll really I, test your mental toughness in this yep. one too. Hate hate and love it. I'll be out there, and I would be. Oh, great. We're going to go eight reps. And then you hit that 400 meter sprint. And I'm not the best long distance sprinter at that anything over like 200 meters. So I was hurting and you recover and you do it again. And by the third, I don't like anything over 40 yards. You're just like a pool of metabolic acidosis. It's a great workout. It's under 10 minutes. Go home, shower. It's a simple one. And that's sometimes I like that. It just keep, give me something very simple, very brutal, and call it a day. Mm-hmm. Call it. Yeah. So that's going to be our first one. That one, please, if you're more advanced, try it. If you're less advanced, this next one's going to be more for you. This is going to well, be. Well, a- but then also with that one, just make the the rep or the mm-hmm. exercise moderate weight. Like yep. just judge your fitness levels. But if you're an, an extreme athlete or a seasoned athlete, like I'm, if Kyle's out there listening, you, he can definitely do this workout. Oh yeah, yep. Um, you can but yeah, it's it. not for the faint of hearted, and it'll definitely uh, it'll definitely reveal you more to yourself. 
<laughs> oh yes, you'll, physically and mentally, you'll be in a dark spot in your mind that that questioning yourself or us of why we told you to do it. <laughs> or, so the next the next one is a a ten minute aerobic circuit. So there will be some jogging and sprinting depending on your level of capability and where you want to take it. And I think the best thing is is a lot of times people think training and workout is like oh, it has to be what's written down. We can always modify it to the degree of the person. And that's what we're going to do here. If if you're a more advanced athlete, you can still do this just at a higher intensity. And that's what we like to do. There's no discrepancy like, oh, you can't do this. It's just you got to change it and modify it. Eventually, you will be able to do this. So yet again, you can use this at a gym, treadmill, or you can be outside on a track and field, a field. It doesn't matter. You can do it in your neighborhood. So it's walking lunges, 10 reps each leg. So you're going to go to- 20 total walking lunges. No weight. This is body weight. Once you get done with the 20 lunges, you're going to jog 20 yards and jog back. If you're higher end, you can sprint 20 yards, jog it back. Then you're going to repeat back into those walking lunges. You're going to repeat walking lunges, jog 20 there and back or sprint 20 there and back for 10 minutes. See how many. No rest. No No rest. rest. No rest. It's continuous. It's an aerobic circuit. Your heart rate's going to be up. It's going to train that repeat kind of sprint endurance if we're sprinting or repeat endurance effort as we go through these 10 minutes. And as you see week to week to week, you'll get more rounds in as you become more efficient. And that's really what we're looking for in these workouts is not duration, is how efficient can you get in 10 minutes. So if you improve in 10 minutes, we now know that your fitness is improving within that time frame. And that is one thing that Matt and I love to use time for is that's how you can measure improvements in fitness by getting more capacity in. That means your system is being coming way more efficient. Yeah. And that's a good one to test yourself. And then when you only have less time, you're still trying to haul ass, trying to get as many rounds as you can done in that allotted time. And you're going to, it's going to help you burn the most calories with the best bang for your buck when you're short on time for that day. But still, I just want to say again, just being repetitive, spend at least five to 15 minutes to warm up, get loose, keep it at your fitness level. And depends on what your goal is. If, if you're, if you have a lot of weight to lose and you have bad knees, then maybe you're just doing an incline walk. And instead of the walking lunges, you're doing some TRX squats or something like that for 20 reps. And if your goal is to boost your conditioning and you're, or, or just burn like a little bit of belly fat and you're, but you're, you're pretty well conditioned athlete and you don't have much pain or any at all, then stick with the walking lunges and like Eric said, sprint instead of jog. But that brings us to our last and final 10 to 30 minute routine for conditioning. And I'm excited about this one because I throw this one in a lot when I'm short on time. For conditioning, which I'm conveniently always short on time on my conditioning day. Just, I hear you on that spend. one. <laughs> we'll take it's it. like something I'm always willing to like give and take. Like, fine, I'll give up 20 minutes to work even harder for 30. Right. Well, take, uh, this, take this one away then. It's <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you go 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, sprint or fan bike, anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes, just depending what your time's like. No more than 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. No more. Cut your cut. It's done. Done. If you've done ten on, ten off, for thirty minutes, you've done. Well, ten on, ten off would be three sprints. Sorry, three sprints per minute times thirty minutes. Not so you did ninety sprints. It's a lot. Yeah, I thought <laughs> six. Yeah, so that's that's brutal. So, I would say, again, five to fifteen minutes. Give that one a try. Spend five to fifteen minutes warming up. Get loose. Make sure you're limber. You could Google what's it called? Oh, never mind. Cut this part out. But yeah, spend five to fifteen minutes warming up, then ten seconds on on a sprint, ten seconds off. Ease into your sprints like a crescendo. Like maybe to start the first one like sixty percent, then seventy, then eighty, and then start to go all out just to make sure everything's good. Yeah, you go all really out in the first like, couple ones. It's going to be <laughs> rough next couple times. And you're just not going to calibrate your system. You're not going to be efficient. You're going to dump a ton of ATP and waste it. Your body's – yeah. And a, and a lot of – my experience, a lot of people do that. They're like, oh, I'm going to hit the first one as hard as I can go. Yep. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, you have 
10 of them and they're like, oh, I thought it was just like one or two. It's like, no, like you kind of got to go into it. Same thing like when you're running conditioning tests for a football, like that first one, yeah, you're still going in the 90%, but it's not 100% intensity, right? If yeah. you have to repeat more. So. Yeah. Well, it was just like – it was, it was kind of like watching Usman last night. Mm -hmm. I mean he was dead fucking tired and he was had his arm over his coach's neck and he's like sucking wind and he was so tired. But when the when the ding, 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 he got right back out there and he didn't – he was pressing the fight up until the last – I don't want to be a spoiler alert, but <laughs> yeah, up until the last <laughs> minute there. Yeah. But – that's what you got to do is you got to pace yourself so you can always kind of keep that foot just leaning on the gas pedal a little bit. I'm we're, we're repetitive as coaches, especially at times when we're making clients do conditioning work because we know you're not fucking listening to us. So we're just kind of repetitive. And my repetitive thing that I always say now is pace yourself, pace yourself. I'm, I already told him it's going to be a, a sprint ladder. You have to do like a 10 on 50, 20, 40, so on and so forth. So you got to be able to pace yourself so you can perform. Mm-hmm. It's always because here's the thing. Here's here's a little nuance to that conditioning workout. If you're dragging ass and you continue to keep going, then good job. You're just making yourself worse. You need to be able to like hit peak performance, do a couple more reps, challenge that system, get tired and fatigued, and shut it down. That's how you get stronger and build a better working system. Not just putting your foot on the gas pedal, like pedal to the metal until your car's broken down. That's not, that's not healthy in the and, long term. Yes. And, and also to stem on that and great that you brought that up is like, these aren't back to back to back workouts. You're not doing this mm. workout Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you could do one Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but it's not going to happen multiple days in a row. And that's why we like to give a couple different avenues. So you can start to understand what it's like and how we operate when we start to program ourselves and conditioning for clients and their programs. Cause it's not, we're not beating them up. We're giving them the right tools to become as efficient as possible throughout their program while leading them to their goals and not getting them burnt out or injured. Mm. Yeah. 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 So here's a, a bunch of good routines that you guys should learn and throw into your your toolbox if you, they're not already there already and we're on Facebook for any people who want assistance with their programming we're also we starting our YouTube channel kind of a mini course to help people learn basic body mechanics and learn to control different parts of their body so they can perform their best in their workout and get the most out of what they're doing in the gym so that mini course will be coming soon but yeah hope you guys enjoyed the episode and we'll catch you guys next time